Welcome back, everyone. Next up, we have Nightscope. It trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol KSCP and is an advanced public safety technology company that builds fully autonomous security robots and blue light emergency communication systems that help protect the places people live, work, study, and visit. Nightscope's long-term ambition is to make the United States of America the safest country in the world. Today, we'll be getting an update from William Santana Lee, the CEO, but first, let's watch this video. In the spirit of continuing to engage our original investor base, welcome our new investors from the public markets and improve our communication with our friends on Wall Street, we're going to devote part of this town hall to reviewing some of the financial highlights from our recently filed quarterly report on Form 10-Q for the first quarter of 2023, as well as share some current events that may be of interest to our stockholders and potential investors. This town hall format is intended to provide an informal forum for our audience to ask questions from Wall Street to Main Street, from Silicon Valley to Washington, D.C. If we're going to achieve our long-term mission of making the U.S. the safest country in the world, we're going to need the entire country engaged, and today is part of it. Of course, any and all figures presented today in this presentation should be read in the full context of the company's recent regulatory filings and risk factors, and those are available for you at ir.nightscope.com. Now let's get to the numbers. Last year in 2022, we recorded $5.6 million in aggregate revenue, and that's from both service and product for the year, reflecting an over 60% growth rate from the prior year. Additionally, at the end of 2022, we built up a backlog of approximately $3.9 million in new orders. And by the 19th of March of 2023, as reported in our 2022 10K, that number had increased significantly to $5.2 million, which is almost the same amount of the revenue for the entirety of 2022. The significant top line and backlog increases are attributed to our acquisition of case emergency systems during the fourth quarter of 2022. With respect to the first quarter of 23, there are three key points. First, I am pleased to report that for the first quarter of 2023, we recorded approximately $2.9 million in revenue over the first three months of the year, which is an over 300% improvement over the first quarter of 2022. This included a year-over-year -year increase in service revenue of approximately 85%. Service revenue includes our ASR machine as a service revenue, as well as maintenance and support revenue related to the blue light towers and call boxes, which is the primary driver of the significant increase as compared to the first quarter of 2022. Product revenue relates to emergency communication device sales and contributed approximately $1.1 million in the first quarter of 23. And despite the ongoing drag from supply chain issues, this reflects an annualized revenue run rate of approximately $11 million. Second. With our focus on top-line revenue growth and cost reductions taking effect during the first quarter, we had a significant positive swing from a gross loss in first quarter of 2022 of $549,000 to a gross loss during first quarter of 2023 of $213,000, a nearly $336,000 improvement. The increase in gross margins is primarily attributable to positive margins generated by our product sales. 
on a percentage basis, gross margins moved from a negative 58% gross margin to a negative 7% gross margin, and our plans are in place to continue to improve our service and product margins as we scale up. Comparing first quarter of 2022 to first quarter of 2023 on a per share basis, we improved significantly from a 30 cent loss per common share to a 6 cent loss. Last year, we noted our plan was to achieve profitability in the next 24 months, and we have made positive movements in that direction. We plan to continue growing the company, and we believe our sales pipeline is strong, and increasing sales will allow us to grow, drive economies of scale, and better leverage our fixed cost base. Third, during the first quarter of 2023, Despite supply chain challenges, we were able to reduce our backlog of new orders from its peak of $5.2 million reported in our 2022 10K down to $4.7 million in about 30 days. However, given the ongoing positive demand for our technologies, our multi-million dollar backlog of orders is continuing to increase. We are therefore focused on transitioning our production strategy from a work cell environment which is appropriate for smaller volumes, to a more traditional assembly line process. Set up to accommodate a larger volume of units with new processes to optimize throughput for the manufacturing of our autonomous security robots here in Silicon Valley. Our cash on hand at the end of 2022 was $4.8 million and our cash and cash equivalents at the end of first quarter 23 was approximately $2.4 million. We seek to improve our cash position through a seven-fold plan, which is underway and includes the following. Number one, continuing to grow our top-line revenue with new service contracts and product sales. Number two, leveraging our financing partnerships with Dimension Funding and Balboa Capital to fund new orders upfront, improving our cash flow. Number three, accelerating delivery of our backlog of orders. Number four, continuing to use our at-the-market program managed by H.C. Wainwright. Number five, realizing cost savings from the cost cuts implemented in January of 23. Number six, reducing our variable costs related to our ASRs, such as telecommunications, service, and cloud costs to improve our margins. And number seven, exploring a possible non-dilutive debt offering to continue to fuel our growth. As a follow-on to the 10 Town Hall Marathon we conducted last month, we'll now transition to the live portion of the Town Hall for questions from our longtime investors, new retail investors, institutions, and analysts. Thank you. All right, let's welcome back Nightscope, a leading developer of autonomous security robot and blue light emergency communication systems. They recently announced their first quarter financials for 2023. Nice to see you again, William. Thanks. Thanks for uh, having us back. Uh, it was an exciting uh, quarter, and uh, we've got uh, we've got a little bit of uh, wings here in our in our growth curve. Great. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, the rise of the robot is actually happening. <laughs> They're all coming to get you, uh, but in a in a good way. So mm -hmm. I, I think what's exciting for me is just to see the year over year growth. We um, did 5.6 million last year. Um, we have uh, at the end of first quarter more than five million dollars in the backlog. Uh, you know, and the year's just getting started. So for us to have that amount of demand uh, this early in the year uh, bodes well. Uh, I think second, you know, as noted in the video, 300% uh, improvement quarter uh, versus quarter of uh, last year. So the robots are are, are on the way and uh, we're growing. And, you know, assuming we keep the same run rate of first quarter, um, that'll put us at about a $11 million annual run rate, which again, will will double the, the sales, uh, so long as we, you know, kind of end the year there, uh, which to me is kind of exciting. Um, we're, we're growing that the, the technology is getting accepted. We're working towards uh, profitability. Uh, so things are heading in the, in the right direction. Well, yes, growth is always good. Hash that out a little bit for us. Why is that multi-million dollar backlog of new orders so important for the company? I think it's good and bad news. Sometimes I feel like I'm in the I Love Lucy uh, episode where they got in the assembly plant and the too many chocolates going too by. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
the team's trying to ship stuff and then the sales team shows up and, you know, puts more in, um, which is a healthy thing, right? You know, one of our uh, uh, teammates internal is joking, like, you know, one day we're going to have a, or maybe he wasn't joking. One day we're going to have a billion dollar backlog of orders. And like you, you want the backlog to be healthy. Uh, you don't want it to, you know, get too big versus kind of where you're at. We still have some supply chain issues that, that we're working through, but, but we are shipping. Um, so that's, uh, so that's promising. And then the, you know, just the acceptance from clients from, you know, we, we signed our big deal with NYPD last, uh, month and, you know, we're working to, uh, to, uh, deliver on that here the, in the second quarter, we've com- you know, continued to make announcements of, you know, semiconductor companies, uh, commercial real estate, um, schools, et cetera. So we're, we're, we're making some good progress. Congratulations on that. Are you doing anything to cut costs? Oof, lots of things to cut costs. Um, I think a, a handful, uh, besides the 20% reduction in force we did at the beginning of the year, um, you know, looking at reducing our telecom costs, uh, reducing our cellular, cellular telecom costs, uh, reducing our cloud costs, uh, service, and then also the efficiency. If you saw it in the video, we have uh, the beginnings of setting up a, a proper assembly line for these machines now that we've got uh, uh, higher volumes. And just notionally, the, the current production machine, the K5, takes us, you know, 100, 120 hours to, to build one machine. This new machine, you know, will take less than 20 hours or maybe said differently, instead of building one machine a week, probably building one or two machines a day uh, is going to add uh, a, a huge improvement uh, in our margins. William, talk a little bit about what is happening in New York City. Uh, I'm going to be going there in a few weeks, and my my sweet father does not want me riding the subways. So, what's 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 the climate like up there? So, uh, if you didn't catch it, you certainly should check out the go to nightscope.com slash rise, uh, and you can see a little bit of what uh, the mayor and NYPD announced uh, uh, last month with us. We had a it was a little crazy and surreal for me. Um, we had the robot roadshow pod police escorted into Manhattan, which was uh, just very emotional for a lot of us. Um, and three days there in Manhattan uh, in Times Square, uh, getting you know New Yorkers to have a chance to come look, feel, see, touch, ask questions about the robots, how they work, and be as transparent as possible. But you know it's been publicly noted, and the mayor is is uh, certainly uh, put an exclamation point on it. The the NYPD's 33,000 or so officers, and they're losing three to 4,000 a year. Um, and we're needing new tools and kind of a new way to reimagine public safety. So if we can get the machines to do the monotonous uh, computational heavy work and let the humans get redeployed at locations where they're sorely needed, um, and we're going to start at a, at a train station uh, in Manhattan uh, to do the, the, the night shift, basically and be able to have NYPD remotely monitor the location. And maybe you don't need as many humans at that location and you can redeploy them where, uh, again, as they're, they're sorely needed. So it's a little bit of putting new tools and advanced technologies for 911 dispatch to be able to see, feel, you know, be able to have eyes, ears, uh, and their voice uh, on the ground in, in multiple locations at the same time. We have a question from Thomas Friedner. Uh, it seems like demand is good, but supply is tight. So can you give us updates on the DC plant facility that was talked about last year? Uh, that wasn't the plant. That was uh, an office that we're uh, looking to set up once we have the FedRAMP uh, approval. Uh, for those of you not familiar with FedRAMP, it's a two-year-plus nightmare cybersecurity review process we've been going through the U.S. federal government. Uh, we're still hopeful. Uh, we don't have a, it's a little bit of a, a black box, but we're hopeful this year we'll get an, an ATO or authority to operate. Uh, our sponsor is the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. And uh, when and if we're able to get that ATO, I, I think there's a, a ton of, of federal agencies that are going to be an opportunity for us to open up an office in D.C. Uh, to service that. But we got one thing at a time. Uh, Melissa wants to know, where are you seeing the largest growth? Um, it's, it's split amongst, if you look at their backlog, it's half stationary stuff, half, uh, autonomous security robots. Um, I think the verticals where we're doing very well are, are healthcare, 
uh, commercial real estate, uh, casinos, um, manufacturing plants, uh, some residential. Um, usually where, um, wherever you might see an officer or a um, guard patrolling is an opportunity for us. Obviously, we have now several large publicly traded companies as clients, uh, PG&E, um, ABM, uh, Penn Entertainment, uh, Lowe's, uh, obviously on the retail side of things. Uh, so we're, as, as, as we said, the rise of the robots is happening. It's happening now. Uh, we Dan Baldwin comments, great video, and he asks, your backlog of orders, what does that do to? Is it supply constraints, product, production limitations, and how do you ensure all products get delivered timely? Uh, it's, all, it's all the above, what was just mentioned, but the primary root cause of the problem is the supply chain issues, and it's a, a whack-a-mole issue. I wish it was just one commodity and one item only, and we can address it, but every week's a new drama and sometimes it's a tier not tier one supplier to us or tier two it's a tier four uh dude that you know stop making that one resistor that's in our printed circuit board or it's a connector that a bunch of automakers decided to buy all of them and now everyone's out um, and every week's a new drama that's the primary one um there's production efficiencies that we're you know certainly needing to address and and more staffing uh, but I think the third one is actually the positive side, where we've got a more of a rinse and repeat uh, sales process. And so the sales team is actually, you know, uh, a big contributor uh, to that backlog. Yeah, that's a good problem to have. All right. Well, William, do you have any closing remarks? It is time is up. Uh, no, just grateful for all our investors. Uh, what we're doing is technically very difficult, um, but we're making a, a good amount of progress. We're getting towards uh focused on profitability. And if you want to keep up with the latest and the latest episodes of actually the Rise of the Robots episodes uh, series, go to nightscope.com slash rise. And thanks and be safe out there. Great. Thank you so much. Congratulations on all this progress. And we hope to see you again soon. Thanks, Anna. We'll see you again. All right, everyone stay with us. We'll be right back with another update.